Please rise for some prayer. Blessed Sabbath. We'll open our divine service with hymn number 384. 384. Stand up. Sorry, sorry. I apologize. 250. 250. So, I would have told you, I go to, to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Those thoughts in our mind will kneel down for opening prayer. Heavenly merciful Father, we are thankful for this beautiful opportunity that we could here together. We are thankful for this beautiful day. We are thankful for Sabbath. Oh Lord, sometimes we don't even realize how important Sabbath it is and how much we could gain for, from it. Oh Lord, we are thankful for all your goodness and mercies and we're pleading that you help us, that you lead us. 
that you give us strength that we could overcome what's ahead of us. O oh Lord, we are weak. We are tempted wherever we are. Oh, please give us wisdom, give us knowledge. Help us that we study harder, that we understand duty what's ahead of us. O oh Lord, please bless us. Please be with this church. Help us and lead us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, dear friends and visitors, dear young people, our children, everybody who is uh, watching online, I'd like to welcome you for divine service. Uh, now we'll uh, invite uh, our children and they have a special song for us. Thank you, children, for this uh, beautiful song. And now we we'll invite uh, Brother Dalibor, and he has a sermon entitled, Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled. Brother Dalibor. Dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, welcome you for our divine service today and uh, we invite the Holy Spirit to be among us. Brethren, uh, I, every time I'm repeating this, I cannot tell you how much we need the Holy Spirit, how much we are, uh, need to be aware of the time that we're living in, how much we need to rely on this power that is promised to us. And today, I, as I said, I invite that power to be among us that we may understand the word that we will study from the, his holy word, and then we may understand and apply into our lives. Today, as we already heard, uh, the subject of our study is, Yaromir, is it possible a little bit uh, lower, the voice, there is an echo, uh, thank you. Today we are, we are going to study about uh, chapter 14 in John. Chapter 14 in John, as Brother Dalibor already uh, mentioned, is start with the word, let not your heart be troubled. 
let not your heart be troubled. So what was the reason why Christ uh, uttered this word to his disciples? Why did he say that? What, what made him say these words? To understand this better, we, can, we have to go to the chapter 13 before that and understand what was happening. So where were they? Where were uh, Christ with his disciples? Where, where were they? At that time, they were in the upper room, right? And in chapter 13, they, they talk about the uh, uh, special service that Christ introduced, which was uh, foot uh, washing. And Christ ex expressed or, or give them new, something new, uh, new service to introduce to them. Then it was uh, Judas who was revealed as a betrayer. And finally, Warning to Peter. Peter said to Christ, what? I am with you all the way. And if anything happen, I will go after you even into a death. I don't mind. I will, I'm ready to die for you. And Christ warned him and said to him, what? You willing to do this? Hmm? Today, it will be uh, three times you will deny me and you will even not know that you have done this anyhow so we come to the chapter 14 and Christ as we mentioned he's alone finally alone with his closest friends and the time come as he said the time time come for departure later on he told them I have to go so he used this time to express his worries, to express desires that he has for his uh, friends, for his disciples. And he started the chapter 14 with the words, let not your heart be troubled. So, as I mentioned, or I, as I said, why did he say that? What made him say these words? He looked around and looked at his closest friends, and what did he see? What have you seen? Well, they were confused. They looked at Jesus and they didn't know what, what's going on. They were confused. They were afraid. And they were sad. On all this, when Jesus started to tell them all this, what uh, it needs to happen in the next day, I couldn't understand. How can he say that? Just a day before that, he was entering into Jerusalem and they were ready to put him in a throne as a king, right? So what's going on? We don't understand. What just happened? What is he talking about? Why? Where is he going? So confusion. They didn't, they didn't understand. And Christ uttered this word, let not your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. I have to tell you something, but do not be afraid. Just before, a few days again before that, they were fighting for the first position. They were fighting who's going to be the first, who's going to be the closest, because the Christ is supposed to be a king. And now he's telling them, I have to go. I have to go. Where? For what? We, we just start, like... The friendship is just, you start to understand each other and you have to go now. Something is, is wrong. We don't understand. And Christ then said, yet a little while I am with you. I have to leave. I'm leaving you. Confused, completely, and scared. So that was the reason for Christ's word, let not your heart be troubled. I don't know about you, but I have to tell you something in my own experience from my own life. When I was a kid, and me and my brother, we go somewhere on our own to our grandparents, to our great-grandparents, and there's mom and dad, they're not with us, and you get sick or something happened, so where, what happens? What are you looking, who are you looking for? Mom. Kid looks for mom, why? Because it's 
the mom comes and everything's right, right? It's comfort, she tells you a few words, and you are not sick anymore. Did you ever experience this? You are not sick anymore. You feel fine. I know that I have one like this. <laughs> she goes away and then that's it. I mean, when she was a kid. Three days and she's sick. Because that's, that's our nature. We don't know. You know, we, we feel insecure. We are feel afraid. You know, something uh, an order happened and then you are lost. That's how disciples felt. That moment, they felt insecure. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? If you go, well, we don't know. Everything is okay when the master is with them. Everything was fine. How many times they were in trouble? How many times there were um, something happened and they didn't know what to do? And Christ came, and within minutes, everything was calm. Everything was okay. So they were looking for that. They were looking for comfort. They were looking for somebody who will tell them, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, so now a question that I have for you today. That was 2,000 years ago. But what are we looking today for? What are we looking today for? I know there are people who they're enough for themselves. They, they're fine. They don't need anybody. That's what they think. But everybody needs somebody, right? You know this word. Everybody needs somebody. For what? For comfort. Even though, you know, there are some people who are pretending, I'm strong, I can do this, I can do that. I don't need nobody. And then on the end, he's just covering all this strength or all this macho uh, image with what? With, with this play, with this uh, uh, image that he has inside we all need comfort. We all need somebody who will tell us, it's okay. Don't worry. So, we all have a problem. We all have a, something that is bothering us. I mean, just uh, look, if you open the, the news, what's gonna, what are you going to see? Something good, beautiful, something that has happened, you know. Uh, yesterday, there was like joyous moment, right? No, most likely you will find the problem. The, this being killed over there. This was flooding. Uh, I was just talking to my cousin, you know, flood here and flood there. Uh, a fire, um, a war in the world, uh, problems, conflicts. Problems. Everybody has a problem. Everybody has something that um, needs to be solved. So, all of us, we're looking for, for comfort. We're all looking for somebody who will tell us it's okay. So, Christ in the chapter 14 start with the words, Let not your heart be troubled. For the same reason you are willing to say that or admit that or not. For the same reason, we all need to hear these words. Let not your heart be troubled. Do not worry. How can he say that? Does he has a reason or does he, can he um, back it up this? Oh, yes. And that's what he say in the second part of this verse. What are we have read? Ye believe in God, believe also in me. So how can this solve our problems? How can this solve our problems? First of all, let me ask you, so now just imagine Christ is sitting with 11 of, the, uh, of his disciples, and uh, he's telling them, do not be afraid, believe in God, and believe also in me. So first of all, if when you say to somebody, believe, you have to believe in something, what, what that means? You don't see this, right? You, you don't see something that you need to believe, right? Is that correct? But Christ was with them. So what is the reason that he's telling them, believe in God and also believe in me? Because he was sitting right in front of them. What is the reason? You see, the problem is that we often trusting to our sight. We see something and then we, you know. And to prove that, let's go to the beginning of the Bible and read from Genesis chapter 3, verses 
one and on. Now the serpent was more supple than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye had, uh, yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the trees which is in the midst of the garden. God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. That's not true. So for God doth know, uh, doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And listen to this. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto the husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew what they were naked. And the, so the fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So what the woman did? She saw, right? Oh, it was good, good to eat. How could she see that? She took it, tried it, and the husband also ate with her, and their eyes are opened. So it wasn't open before that. You see that? I will do something because I saw it. Oh, it was good. And they didn't do what? They didn't believe in God's words. You see that? We trust in our own sight, even though, well, I was just telling to, to the, uh, the other word, my sight is not good as anymore, anymore as it was before. But anyway, let's say I'm young and then oh, I have a good sight. I can see whew, a kilometer from here, really good. Is that good enough? God said, or Christ over here, it says, believe in God. What this Adam and Eve, what they didn't do, what were they missed to do? They didn't believe in God's word. They trust their own sight and their own feelings. So Christ told them, believe God and believe also in me. Why? Because what I'm going to tell you, you need to believe in that. You need to believe in that in order to uh, survive, to, to live. Now, in the next words, in John, we read, so John 14, John 14, uh, verse 2. So we read here. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it weren't so, I would have told you, I go to, I go to prepare a place for you. So, what you need to believe to me? What do you need, why you need to trust me? See, I'm here, and I'm telling you, I will leave soon, really soon. But there is a place that you need to believe. There is a place that I'm willing, or I want you to be with me. And I'm going there, and I'm preparing this. So now your faith, you believe, comes in place. You need to believe in me. You need to believe in my words. You need to understand that my wishes for you is always the best. I wish I can explain this to better, but there is no other way. You have to believe in my words. Mansions are ready. If I go, they're ready already, but... Even if they are not, if I go, I will prepare a place for you, and I will come again, so you can be with me. So the first verse 3 is telling us something else. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, and where I am, there ye may be also. So if I go and prepare that place. I will come again. So this is the part that you need to trust me. I will come again. I will come and I will take you so that you 
I love you, that you can be with me. I, uh, this is my wish. This is something that I came in this world for. And then the verse 4, it says, And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. So this is kind of strange. Now Christ telling him, now I go to the place that you know, and the, the way to there you also know. So what is the next thing that Thomas says? How can we know that? Listen to the, verse 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Well, admit it, we would do the same thing. We would say the same thing. You never told us. Like, how can we know? You just tell us that you go somewhere, but we don't know. How can we know the, the place? We don't know the place. By the way, what Thomas was called, what was he called? Thomas? Doubter. Yes, doubter. So he was, everybody else was thinking the same way, but he was the first one to ask, well, we don't know. We, how can we know where you're going? You just told us, and we don't know. What is the way? We don't know the way. And now we come to the verse 6, which is really well known to all of us. And Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This text, if you go on any place, if you listen, you probably heard so many times, people are trying to explain it, people are trying to say, you know what, uh, that's what it means, this, that's what it means. So it's, it's very well known. So let us go to, to, to a few more texts, few more um, uh, readings to, to understand what is the meaning here. So Thomas is asking, Hugh tells us you go somewhere, and you wants us to not to worry, but we don't know. We, we cannot understand this. So Christ telling him, okay, so you don't know, but I'm telling you, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So when he says, I am the way, let's read a few more texts to understand that better. So the first one, there is much more. I'm just going to read a few of them. So the first one, we read from Acts. Chapter 4, verse 12. So just a little further. So Acts chapter 4, verse 12, where we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So this is one aspect of that, what Christ said to, to his disciples. Apostle Peter here in John, when they were... Um, and this big crowd uh, talking. So Peter said, there is no other way which there is a salvation with. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby, whereby we must be saved. So the, the other text is from Romans chapter 5, verse 2. Also talking about the, uh, the so Romans chapter 5, verse 2. And we read, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So why is he saying, I am the way? Apostle Paul is, is telling us, we have access to, to salvation through Christ. So he is the way, he is the only way that we can have a, a salvation through. Then, we read uh, also in John chapter 10, just a little bit back. So we just read a few texts. So John chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. Christ telling to... Um, so chapter 10, verses 7 and 8. Then said Jesus unto them again, Very, very, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, and all that... All that ever come before me are thieves and robbers. Before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pleasures. And also we read from Ephesians, Ephesians uh, chapter 2. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. So I am reading a little bit more. 
But just to give you um, more uh, proof, more text. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. So we read two, uh, Ephesians 2, 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So he is the access, he is the door, he is the way. There is no other way to come to the Father but, or come to the salvation, but through him. So we read also for this, from the same text, um, commentary from Sister White to the same text from, uh, for Ephesians chapter 2, 18. And she said, we have access to God through the merits of the name of Christ. And God, you know what, let me put glasses on, otherwise... We have access to God through the merits of the name of Christ, and God invites us to bring to him our trials and temptations. For he understand them all. He would not have us pour, pour out our wo uh, woes to human ears. To the blood of Christ we may come to the throne of grace and find grace to help in time of need. So why did he tell them, I am the way? Do you see what it says here? In a time of trouble, in a time of any time that you need any, pro, any, any advice, any, in a time that you were in trouble, in a time that you need help, what it says here? Through the blood of Christ, we may come to the throne of grace and find grace in, to help in time of need. We may come with assurance saying, my accept, acceptance is in the beloved. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. As an earthly parent encourage his child to come to him at all times, so the Lord encourage us to lay before him our wants and perplexities, our gratitude and love. Every promise is sure. Jesus is our surety and mediator and has placed at our commands every resource that we may have a perfect character, blood of Christ. I am the way. I am the way. I am the one who you can trust because I have lived the life perfect on this earth. I have lived the life instead of you so you can have access to God the Father. The second part of this uh, verse, it says, I am the truth. So let us read a few texts from the Bible again to, um, to remind us. So uh, again, from the John chapter 8, verse 32, we read just to uh, prove that. So uh, John uh, chapter 8, verse 32, and we read, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Again, the Thomas might say, well, we, who is the truth? We don't know. How can we know the truth? If this truth can save us, can, can you know, give us a life, then where is that truth? How can we know that you know, we can live by this truth? So let, uh, let us read from the same same um, from John, uh, verse 1, and sorry, uh, chapter 1, verse 14. And we read here, very well known text. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So in him, who is he? He is the word. He is the one who gives us all this knowledge, who gives us all this that we need to know the Father, to know the Son. So he said here, He is the Word. He is the one who, create, who was created through the whole universe and everything. So if we want to know the truth, then we go to, to Him. And again, uh, we read from the same, uh, from John chapter 17. Sorry, I'm again. Uh, 
chapter, uh, John chapter 17, verse 17, and we read, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. So how can we find that truth? In his word, and the word is Christ. So he is the one, as we uh, have read in this text in, in John chapter 14, I am the way, I am the truth. You see now, I am the word and the truth in this word. So how can we find the way through that word, to the truth that is in his word? And the last part of the text that we, uh, we have read here in, the, in this uh, uh, verse 6, and he says, I am the life. Now, I will give you just a, two texts, there's many more, but just two texts that are each and every one know well. So John chapter 11. John chapter 11 and verse 25. So who can tell me this text without reading? <laughs> oh, you can read it over there, right? So chapter 11, verse 25, and he says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And again, chapter 17, verse 3, 17, 3. And this is the life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. If you want to find the life, and the life eternal, you can find it, so we'll go back, you can find it where? In the Word. The Word that is written by who? Given by God. So we're going back. Life eternal, you can find it here, and how can you find But Which way? By who? What the Christ said. I am the way. Through Him. So you see how that works. The life eternal, which you can find it here, and through who? Through, you can find the access to that through Jesus Christ and His merits and His blood. It is, when you go this way, when you read, when you understand that, then you can say, well, that's not that hard. You know, this is the way, this is the, 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 the reason, or this is the, 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 um, the way, and how to find that way. That's, that is the way, and this is the, the life eternal that we can do. So in conclusion, I would like to read together with you the 16th chapter of the John, Epistle of John, so 16th chapter and verse 33. The last verse in, uh, in chapter 16. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. And Christ is telling us, I have overcome the world. How hard is to overcome the enemy that is already overcame? Christ overcame this enemy. So, for us, it should be easy. Because this is the enemy that is already Dead, if you will. You need to overcome. Christ did this for us. So Christ said, be of good cheer. I have did this for you already. So all you need is what? Be of good cheer. Follow my footsteps. Follow my, the way that I already planted for you. And be of good cheer. Do not be afraid. In the book... Uh, Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles, on page 23, I will read a little bit. So, Acts of the Apostles, page 23, we 
read further. <clears throat> And we read, in his parting conversation with his disciples on the night before the crucifixion, the Savior made no reference to the sufferings that he had endured and must yet endure. He, he did not speak of the humiliation that was before him, but sought to bring to them minds that which would strengthen their faith, leading them to look forward to the joys that await the overcomer. He rejoiced in the con consciousness that he could and would do more for his followers, that he had promised that from, his would flow, from him would flow for love and compassion, cleansing the soul temple and making men like him in character, that his truth, armed with the power of the Spirit, would go forth conquering and to conquer. These things I have spoken unto you, he said, that in me ye might have peace, in world ye shall find tribulation, but be of good, courage, good cheer, I have overcome the world. Christ did not fail, neither was he discouraged, and this disciple were to show a faith of the same enduring nature. They were to work as he had worked, depending on him for strength. Through their way would be be obstructed by apparent, uh, though their way would be obstructed by apparent impossibilities, yet by His grace they were to go forward, despairing of nothing and hoping for everything. Encouraging words for us today. The enemy Christ already overcame, and we have nothing to fear in Him. He is the one who give us strength, who give us cheer, who give us hope for a better future. That's why Christ, from all this tribulation that he said to them in the, in the verse, in the verse um, 3, he said to them, I am going to some place, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. I wish that you can be with me, and I'm going to prepare the place, and you one day will, will be with me. So may the Lord help us today that we can understand His will for us, that we can understand the way that we can go to the, to the Father, that the way there is exist. He, he made it for us the way he, he give us an opportunity. He give us an access. He give us everything that we need for access into the heaven. So now, for us, is only one thing. To accept this, him, to accept his great sacrifice that he did for us. And ask him for help. Ask him for, to guide us. Ask him to give us help in this troublous time that we live in. My dear brothers and sisters, it's not easy to live uh, in today's society. It's not easy, but he said, I already overcome the enemy. I was there. I know how it is. I am with you all the way. If we are willing to give ourselves to him, he's willing for us, willing to, to help us. May he help us. May he guide us. May, may he be our uh, guide. May he be our God and helper. So that we don't have to be afraid of whatever is in front of us, that we may be overcomers. May he help us in this. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dalibor. What a beautiful promise. Let not your heart be troubled. We'll go to our closing hymn. Hymn number 294. 294. Please rise.
We kneel down for closing prayer and brother Dali Boy will lead us. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are coming in the present Lord to in this Holy Sabbath day to thank the Lord for thy mercy, for thy sacrifice that you have done for us, for the way open for our salvation. Father, open our eyes, open our mind and our heart that we can understand and accept that promise, accept that way that you have opened for us, that we may be ready when you come again in the clouds of heaven as you have promised. Help us to understand the will for us. Help us to understand the great promise that you have given to us and be ready for the second coming. Father, forgive us our shortcomings, forgive us our sins that you have, we had done against thee, against our brothers and sisters. Help us to live according to thy will. Help us to be brothers and sisters, people worthy of thy name. When you come again in the clouds of heaven, that we may be found ready and shout with a loud voice, this is our savior, we have waited for him. Father, this is our desire, this is our wish, and we are asking for thy help so we can live life according to thy will. We are asking for thy help, for thy Holy Spirit to be among us, that we may be um, worthy of thy promise. Father, we are asking all this in the name of our Savior and thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We came to the end of our this divine service. Uh, remember for uh, next weekend for young people meeting, uh, Canada Day. If you have any items, please contact Sister Sonia. And uh, don't wait that somebody asks you. Just if you have something, just contact her and, and uh, you could do presentations. And uh, God bless you and blessed Sabbath.